Hey everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Mitchell Pearson, and today we're going to be taking a look at understanding DAX concepts. We're starting with row context. Now, if you're new, if you've been working with it for a while, this is an important topic fundamentally, foundationally, we need to understand it before we go deeper. The inspiration behind this series here, I've been teaching DAX for many years, DAX boot camps private, publicly. I've been doing videos for our on-demand training platform. The inspiration behind this is that I find more and more today that people are intimidated by DAX, they're overwhelmed by DAX, and they are thinking it's a more difficult language than it is. And I think the scenario there is that you have, let's take a pool for example, you got the three foot, you know, into the pool and then you got let's say 20 feet into the pool people are diving right into the deep end they're jumping right into advanced dax classes they're going and buying the deepest darkest book they can find and they're being inundated with all these topics and it's overwhelming them and some of the people that i'm seeing being really intimidated by dax are not brand new people coming from excel some of them are t-sql developers programmers and they're just unbelievably baffled by how difficult they think dax is and by the time we get to the end of a week, right, they're like, wow, this was a lot easier than I thought it was. And so what I want to do in this series is cover the fun fundamentals, the foundational prop, um, kind of principles. And I want to do it in a way where I remove a lot of the complexity. I want to make this simple. I want to give you the tools that you need in order to be able to go out there, write your own DAX, author your own DAX calculations, maybe take calculations that aren't quite working the right way and dissect them and break them down yourself and build from that. So... I'm going to try to simplify some of the terms here just to keep it a little bit simpler, but I want to give you the tools that you need to jump right in and do what you need to do. Please watch this video all the way to the end. Do not jump to the rest of this series. Do not jump to nested row context or context transition or evaluation context. You have to watch this video and understand it very firmly. Get a firm grasp. Understand it solidly. Let's dive right in today and take a look at row context. The first thing that I want to take a look at is really creating a new calculated column. So if I were to go over to our data view and I click on my customer table, in my customer table, I have already created a calculated column here at the very end, very simple, very basic, where I'm telling it I want to create a full name column and it's going to be the first name and it's going to be the last name, right? Now, this is so easy this is such an easy concept, row context, that people don't even think about it because it's like, of course, that's the way it works. No exaggeration, right? How does it know when I create a calculated column to take the first name from that row and the last name from that row and create the new column? How does it know? Here's the first tip. Calculated column works on one row at a time. Another way of saying that is it iterates over each row in the table. It works on one row at a time. And so because it's working on one row, there's only one first name available. There's only one last name available. Common sense. So you're like, man, Mitchell, why are you doing a video on something that's so basic? I promise you. Keep watching. So if we go over to the very end here, right, we get exactly what we think. We get the first name. We get the last name with a little space slipped right in there in the middle. And it's working. So we don't have to say get the, you know, in some world, if a row context didn't exist, then when you said what's first name, it would actually see every first name in the entire table. And you'd have to find the right one with more complicated code. But we don't have to, thank goodness, because of row context. So that's the first demo that I wanted to do very quickly here. Now, let's take another look at this. And I want to show you something here from a setup perspective. If I go over to my model view, on the model view, we've created a relationship here between the customer table to the internet sales table, right? Our customer table filters down our sales table on the customer key. That is the active relationship in our data model. If you're not familiar with active relationships, don't worry too much about that now. We're gonna dive into that in probably the next video. I'll see how that kind of um, folds out. But right now, I think that's gonna be my next video. But this is gonna be the active relationship. So what you might expect is, if I wanted, since we know customer filters down, right, we know it filters down the sales table, I might want to create a new column here. So let me go ahead and go up to the very top of this table under column tools. I'm going to create a new column. And this time you're going to start to see the impact of what a row context does. And what we're going to say is that we want to go over to the internet sales table and we want to find out the last purchase date of this customer, right? So right here we're going to call this something like last order date 
All right, so last order date equals, and I'm gonna do something like this, maximum, right? So we're gonna grab the maximum order date from our internet sales table, and then we're just gonna grab the order date. Now, what you would expect to happen if you're brand new to this, or you haven't really played with this a lot, is you would expect it to take whatever the ID of this column is here. So let me just go ahead and hit enter real quick. And then I am going to zoom out and we're gonna scroll all the way back over to the left so we can see the ID. Actually, let's look at the result here at the end and then we'll scroll back to the left, right? So it's taken a moment to load. And you'll notice that we're getting the same result all the way down. Now let's talk about why we're getting this result. We're working within a row context. And in order to simplify this, the way I like to think about it is when you have something. So what this is doing is we created a calculated column, right? This calculated column creates a row context. One of the side effects of the row context is that the active relationship that we just saw a moment ago in the model, this active relationship is disabled. What I mean by that is that this customer key is unable within a row context by default to filter down the internet sales table. So when you wrote this expression right here, you might've thought to yourself, oh, I'm gonna get the max order date for this customer over there on the right. And then I'm gonna get the max order date for this customer and that customer, but that's not what happened. What happened here is that when we got the maximum order date, it went and looked at the internet sales table. It found the very last date in that table for all customers and it repeated that value all the way down. Whenever you see this behavior right here where the value is repeated all the way down, what that tells you is that filtering is not occurring, right? It's not occurring. Filtering the way that you might expect it is not occurring. Now, the way I can solve this, whenever you run into a problem like this, is we can simply solve this with the related and the related table function. And you can think of related and related table, here's a tip, as like a VLOOKUP in Excel. So for those of you that have an Excel background and you're sliding right into DAX, related is very much like a VLOOKUP. Look, I wanna go to another table and I wanna grab a column from that table and I wanna bring it over to this table. Uh, if you come from a SQL background, it's similar to a join. We don't have to tell it what column to join on because the relationship already exists though. So we get to skip a step here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna make this work. So the first thing that I need to do is we are on the single side of the relationship. And what I mean by that is we're in the customer table. So because we're in the customer table and the relationship is on customer key to customer key, in the customer table, the customer key is always unique. It's always unique. So therefore, that's the one side of the relationship. In the internet sales table, every time a customer makes a purchase, we record that transaction so the customer can show up in that table multiple times. And so since we're on the one side, we're going to use a function called related table. So we'll go in here and grab related table and I'm going to tell it that I want to grab the internet sales table. Now related table is a table expression that returns a table of related records from the other table using the default relationship. Now one way to debug this and test this, this is extra, this is free, is I can do something like count rows here, right? Just to see if it's working. So what we're going to return in that cell over there is we're going to return the number of related rows that show up in internet cells. So we're going to see that first and make sure we're not getting, you know, 60,391 all the way down. So let's make sure that works. So we're going to do a count rows. This is just a quick little validation. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you how we can sum up or get the last order date. All right. So the results are in and you'll notice that for Larry Gill, he only has one transaction for Joffrey or Jeffrey Gonzalez. We have five. For Blake, we have six. So we see that filtering is occurring. This is a very clear indication that by using related table, the active relationship is now being leveraged and filtering occurs. Now, the key element, we're gonna proceed. We got other demos we're gonna do here. The key element in this video is that when row context gets introduced, when row context gets introduced, by default, the active relationship in the data model is kind of disabled, okay? This is important because it's not what most people think that have seen this behavior in the past. They think that this behavior only happens on calculated columns. And I mean, this is a vast majority of people that write DAX. They think this only happens on calculated columns, but it's not true. So like I said, watch to the end because we're going to take a look at other places where this occurs in just a moment. So this gives us our last order date. Well, we see that it's filtering related table worked. How do we get this to work? How do we get the maximum date now? I'm gonna show you another method. Now, I'm not gonna talk about this because I'm gonna do a series of videos on X functions. I love X functions, they're awesome. Uh, but we're gonna use a function called maxx. We can't use max because max only accepts 
essentially a single column. You can't pass a table in as the first parameter. Now we have this related table. So we have to use maxx because maxx will take a table as its first parameter. So we're going to say, all right, we'll pass in the related table, which of course for the first row would have been one. So it returns only that one. For the next row, it was six, so on and so forth. So we're going to do maxx here and we're going to say, all right, for each related row in the other table, just return the last order date. Once again, don't worry too much about what maxx is doing. I'm going to explain this in a future video and it's going to be very clear exactly what it's doing. And so this is going to return the last order date for each customer now because we've done related table. So let's give that a moment to load. All right, so it looks like it has loaded. And if we zoom back in over here, you will see that we now see the last order date, January 11th, April 10th, uh, what is that, May 4th. And so you go down the list, little, little Star Wars here. You go down the list and you got all of your dates. It's working exactly the way we want it to. Now, once again, most people are already familiar with this on some level. Where this really gets you is if you are working in a calculated measure and row context gets introduced and you don't realize it's there. And I have seen some unbelievably convoluted solutions where people are trying to solve this and work around it just because they don't realize they can use something like related and related table. Before we jump into that though, we're going to take one more quick look at related and related table. So I showed you that if you're on the one side, which is the single side of the relationship, we use related table. If you're on the many side of the relationship where the key can appear multiple times, we go over to internet sales real quick. This is where you would use related. And so let's just say hypothetically for some reason or another, I wanted to go to one of my other tables and I wanted to add a column here in this table. Well, one thing that I could do is I could say, hey, I want to add, let's say the product name for whatever reason here in this table. Well, once again, if I go up to the top here and I say, I want to create a new column. Let's make sure I got the table selected here. I say, I want to create a new column under table tools. And we say, we want to go get the product name, right? So we'll call this something like product name equals. And then we say, all right, we just want to go over to um, our product table. So if we can get this to work here, product table. And you notice that it doesn't pop up. IntelliSense is not working. And so one thing I tell people all the time is if you're writing DAX, IntelliSense is not popping up. Just stop. Do not keep writing your DAX. It's not working. So this is kind of weird. If you've ever done this with a calculated measure, you know that it doesn't matter where you're building your measure. You can see all the relationships in the data model. But with this calculated column, I cannot. And the reason for that is because a row context exists. So therefore, the active relationship is just disabled. It's not there. So the way we can activate that relationship and force it to work or kind of, you know, take it from that deactivated state and put it into an activated state is by using the related function. So we're going to say related and then we're going to tell it now we want to go grab our product and everything is working like magic. Now, there is another way to do this, to do what I'm doing without using related and related table. And I actually like the other method better but it involves a more complex topic of context transition. So I'm not introducing it today. Today, we're just going to take a look at related and related table. All right, and if we come over here, we now get the product name. If you wanna see the number of different products that have been brought in, we can look at the filter and you can see all of these different products have been brought in from our product table. This is working, this is beautiful, this is easy. Now, when you are working with other certain functions in DAX, certain functions in DAX will cause this behavior row context to occur. And the reason that's important to understand is because this is where most people get really stuck, really caught up. What functions, Mitchell, work on one row at a time and cause a row context? That's a great question. One function is going to be the filter function. And that makes sense because what a filter function does is you pass in a table as the first parameter. It works on every row of that table and it evaluates every row with a specific expression and says, do you meet this expression? If you do, you evaluate to true, we're going to keep that row. If it does not, it gets filtered out. So that's a filter function. It's going to iterate over a row. It's going to work on a table one row at a time. And as a result, it creates a row context. The other function that's going to be very important here are X functions, min X, max X, average X, concatenate X. Um, there's a bunch of them that are out there. I love X functions. We're going to do a whole series, a couple of videos on it, but those also create a row context. And when you're working in a calculated measure, 
and that gets created, your default mindset is, oh, filtering should be working automatically. But all of a sudden, because that's nested in there, it's deactivating the relationship. So let's take a look. Let's just take a look at a demo, very simple demo for today. Future videos, we're gonna dive deeper into this concept, right? So here we go. This is what I really wanted to get to. We are going to create a new calculated table. So up here across the top, I'm going to go ahead and go over to table tools. If you're on an older version of Power BI desktop, you're going to be doing under the modeling ribbon here. And I'm going to tell it that I want to create a new table. And I've actually already created the table over here and I didn't delete it before the video. So we're just going to work around it again. We'll give it a different name, but we're going to call this something like large weekday sales, right? And so let me show you what we're trying to do with this table. So large weekday sales. And what I want to do with this table is we're creating a calculated table and we're going to use filter to do this. So I'm going to write out the filter function and the filter function takes a table as its first parameter. That's a very clear indication that this is going to be working within a row context. So the table that I'm going to provide here will be my internet sales table. So I'm going to filter down. I'm going to work over every row of my internet sales table. And the first thing I want to identify is what is a, what's considered a large cell, right? So I'm going to say where internet sales and then sales amount, is let's say greater than 2000 and we can play with this number later uh, but we're going to say the first requirement here is that the sales amount must be greater than 2000. the next thing that i want to do here is i want to add another filter because remember we're talking about weekday sales and in order to find out what the weekday sales are i can go back to the date table so i start typing in something like date and you notice that when i start typing in date I can't see the date table. Why? Because the filter function is working on one row at a time in the internet sales table. And so although there is a relationship between internet sales and the date table, there is an active relationship. The active relationship on the internet sales table has been disabled, right? So therefore, when I try to go and reference the date table, it doesn't work. Now this has some very important application that we're going to get into later when we dive into context transition and we're going to just dive right in. But by then you've kind of experienced the shallow end a little bit. And we've talked about these topics. We're ready to jump into the 20 foot deep end, if you will. I don't know who has a 20 foot deep pool, but that's my analogy. So we're going to stick with it. So what do we do, right? What do we do in this situation? And this is where I've seen unbelievably convoluted solutions from people. What we do is we simply come in here and say, Oh, there is a row context. The active relationship has been disabled. So we're going to use related and we're going to go over to our date table and we're going to grab the day number of week. And then we're going to say, all right, well, where the day number of week is in, and there's a ton of different ways we could do this. We could say where it's, you know, not equal to some, we could do whatever, but I'm going to use the in clause here. And we're going to say where the day number of week is in two, three. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, close this up. I'm going to need that. So I'm using an in clause similar to like SQL here. And so what we're doing is because the filter function created a row context, we're leveraging those navigation functions here to return the filter that we need to activate that relationship. This is unbelievable. This is incredible. A lot of times you use filter function in this way inside of a calculated measure where you're going to return a scalar expression, right? So maybe I wanted to return my large weekday sales as a measure. And I want to be able to say, what are my large weekday sales for Australia, for America, for Mexico, whatever it is. And so I would have to do this filter kind of nested within that. And then once I get this result, I then sum that up, right? This allows you to do that. And if I go down to the very bottom down here, we have zero rows in this table. Well, let's let that update. We have 6,212 rows in this table. And if you know anything about internet sales, it's normally going to be 60,000 rows. And so we've taken it from 60,000 down to 6,000 with the filter that we've applied. And that is row context. Watch this video again and again, rewind it, do what you need to do. If you like this video, before I forget, please hit like, hit subscribe and tell your friends, right? Tell your friends. Um, but we're going to dive into deeper topics in this series. I hope this was informative for you. I hope this helped out. Like I said, I'm trying to simplify these concepts as much as I can. We are going to, in about four or five, six videos here, we're going we're gonna to work our way very quickly into those complex topics that people get really confused with, but we're going to do it incrementally. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.